Have you ever wondered how masturbation might lead to marrying a pillow? You bet I do. Seven or each of the characters of SpongeBob were uh, modeled after the seven deadly sins. You know you forgot the saying, right? Good morning. Good afternoon. And good night. Go oh, ahead. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's alright. Oh man. Alright, well. So SpongeBob and the seven, the seven deadly, deadly sins. sins. The first, greed, was modeled for Mr. Krabs. This by far is the most obviously our obvious comparison that can be made. The uh, I like money. Yeah. The avarice and uh, the avarice of Eugene Krabs is made painfully clear throughout the series. He constantly thinks or thinking of ways to turn a profit and even it in, or even if it involves taking advantage of his friends and putting them in harmful situations. Eh, self explainable there, yeah. Mm, yeah that's self that's that so was the envy. One. Envy is Plankton, another no brainer with all of Krabs wealth and good fortune. Uh, there has been an equal amount of hard luck and failure for his arch rival, okay. Sheldon Plankton. Plankton also owns a struggling restaurant called the Chum Bucket, and is consumed with the desire to achieve success of his, achieve the success of his adversary. His goal in life is still the Krabby Patty formula, and his crabs are <laughs> his crabs Krabby Patty formula from his from his crab <laughs> from his crabs and drive his primary competitor out of business. All right, well, I also knew that one, I guess. Uh, now, number three, Sloth is Patrick. The guy lives under a rock, for crying out loud. This isn't enough to convince you the episode Big Pink Loser, Patrick is given an award for doing absolutely nothing longer than anyone else. Of he course. then proceeds to go back under his rock and protect his title. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> so far, seems legit. Yep, seems fine. Now, Pride is Sandy. The fact that Sandy Cheeks is from Texas alone should almost suffice for this one. She is a squirrel that is very proud of her heritage, so much so that in one episode she nearly moved back home. Sandy also takes a great deal of satisfaction in being the only land critter living down in Bikini Bottom amongst the fishy folk. Though generally good-natured individual, Sandy is quick to spout off and, uh, about the greatness of her Lone Star State. Texas! <laughs> or to show, uh, or, to, or to show off her athleticism in a karate match or a weightlifting contest. She is pretty strong, surprisingly. Number five is Wrath. It's Squidward. Squidward Tentacle has no qualms about expressing his negative outlook on life. Whether it's, well, whether it's describing how much he hates his job at the Krusty Krab or through outward disdain of an obnoxious neighbor. He is also portrayed as a general failure. He refuses to acknowledge his own personal flaws. This constant self-denial manifests itself in a sarcastic sense of humor and resentment toward the, soci or toward the society that doesn't appreciate his creativity and clarinet skills. His clarinet skills. <laughs> They're terrible. Anyway, uh, number six is Gluttony, which is caught me off guard. Gary. Gary? That just seems odd. And now this one, uh, this one's a bit trickier. The one, uh, those who have watched a great deal of the series will have noticed a number of jokes about SpongeBob having to remember to feed his pet snail. To be honest, Gary doesn't do a whole lot besides eating and meowing. And the yeah. meowing is often due to the fact that he is hungry. Once SpongeBob hadn't fed his pet, Gary is shown eating part of a couch. In another episode, Gary <laughs> runs away from home yeah. because SpongeBob forgot to feed him while or for a while. And the old lady tried to cook him up, I think. Yeah. Another time, uh, SpongeBob had amnesia. Gary ate a year's supply of snail food and became morbidly obese. <laughs> this proves beyond a doubt that he, when left to his own devices, Gary would rather do nothing but eat. I see. I see. And number seven is lust for SpongeBob. That's interesting. Uh, our final analogy. He loves Squidward. And yeah, I guess. And the Krusty Krabs. <laughs> mm -hmm. <Or>, yeah, <laughs> Krusty Krab. Our final analogy is probably the least apparent because we typically think of lust in a sexual sense. However, the alternative definition for lust is simply a passionate desire for something. Uh, for something. In this sense, the word the it cannot patty. be denied. The absorbent yellow friend is extremely lustful creature. 
SpongeBob has a great lust for life that is incomparable to most of the cartoon characters. Uh, he yearns for affection of both friends and foe alike, is eager to please, and will often stop at nothing to complete a task. Are you a bit lustful? I guess everyone can be a little lustful. You think about it? That's true. I'm a bit of all of those, though. I'm pretty gluttonous. <laughs> I do eat a lot. Yes, he I, he's, he's a bottomless pit. I enjoy eating. So what's the next one we got here? Alright. Next, uh, mind-blowing. Man Married a Pillow. Yes. This one I will take over. All right. A Korean man named <laughs> Lee Jin Gyu yes. fell in love with a life-size Japanese body pillow called the Dakimakura. Daku, Dakimakura. The pillow has a lo has a uh, image of a cartoon character named Fate Testarosa on it from an anime called Maho Shoujo Lyrica Nanoha. We'll go with that. It's quite a mouthful. Yes. The 28 year old man takes his pillow with him everywhere and eventually got married to it. And of course we'll put this in the uh, little description here for you to go check out. Uh, this is actually part of a border cultural phenomenon. Broader, broader, sorry. There is a growing subculture of men in Japan who engage in romantic relations with pillows that have cartoons on them. People who have difficulty with romantic relationships and with real three-dimensional people instead of instead find themselves attracted to two-dimensional anime characters. You can also learn more in the description. So what's next? Well, I think that next it will be, uh, oh, well, uh, after suffering a knife wound this, to the stomach while performing fellatio, a teenager became pregnant despite being born without a vagina. It's if you want to know what fellatio is, you just have to find out yourselves. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> yeah, they could Google it. Anyway, anyway. Uh, doctors in Lesotho were puzzled when they discovered that a... A uh, 15-year-old patient uh, going into labor did not have a vagina. The girl suffering from a rare, a rare birth defect called uh, Mullerian agenesis. They found out that she conceived her child when a jealous ex stabbed her after performing fellatio with her new boyfriend. Apparently she got stabbed while the, on an empty stomach so she did not have enough gastric acid to kill all the sperm. And as the stab wound opened up a path to her urethra, where she got impregnated, I guess sperm can last a really long time, so be careful. <laughs> and you know you get pregnant through a stab wound. Now you know how if you want to try it. That sounds very painful, and I don't know if anybody <laughs> would want to put themselves in through that, you know. So the next one we have here for you uh, is for, I believe it's number eight. It is. Yes, as soon as you move it over. Come on, boy. Water, water, water. Come on, boy. We don't want the snake. Shh, dude. There we go. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, the, uh, a man brought... <laughs> bought. Yeah, no, he brought. It's, it's bought. It, okay. It's yeah, okay, it is bought. Uh, 12,150 pudding cups in one weekend so he could rack up enough airline miles to fly to Europe. Uh, for once, a fun story in a chain email is actually true. Okay. As part of a promotional, Healthy Choice was offering 500 frequent flyer miles to anyone who purchased 10 Healthy Choice products. David Phillips recognized that if he purchased individual cups of pudding at 25 cents a piece, he could easily rack up miles. He ended up with 1.25 million frequent flyer miles. Holy crap. That is a lot of pudding. That is a lot of miles. <laughs> Roughly uh, about $3,000. Uh, that is the, equi the equivalent of around 31 round trip tickets to Europe and or 42 tickets to Hawaii. Uh, he also donated the pudding cups to the Salvation Army and local food, food banks and was able to write off the donation on his taxes. Oh now that's God. a smart man, don't you think? That is very smart. That's crazy. Like so next... What's that? There was actually, I think there was actually a movie that that was about, it's called Punch Drunk Love with Adam Sandler in it. Yes, you were saying about that. Yes, that's how I knew about that already. Which is 
Weird. How old is that information? It is. It is pretty old. I just not a lot of people, a lot of people oh, really? know about it. I guess. I that's the first I've heard of it. So it's news to me. <laughs> all right. Last but not least, masturbation is good for you. You know. Yes, we all knew that. Anyway. <laughs> How do you think I got carpal tunnel? What? <laughs> Sorry. Throughout history, ple uh, pleasuring oneself ha has been a taboo mm. topic. <laughs> Even to the point of outright denials, the sort of behavior has long been denounced by moral leaders and the medical community at large. But those brave enough to find out for themselves typically find these sort of attitudes to be nothing but myths and moral discriminations. Unless you suffer from post-orgasmic illness syndrome. <laughs> Sometimes I throw up. I can't help it. Oh my god. Self-pleasuring... It's like, oh yes! <laughs> Self-pleasuring has numerous health benefits for both male and females and can even lead to better intercourse. In addition to being yeah, great will. stress relief, our self-stimulation can serve as a natural energy booster to improve your mood. Other gender-specific benefits include, for men, uh, improved immune system function, increased resistance to prostate infection, and healthier prostate in general. And men who masturbate more than five times a week are less likely to develop prostate cancer. I'm safe. <laughs> so tug yourself to a better life. All right, tug away. For women, impro improved resistance to yeast infection, uh, yeah. combating premenstrual tension and physical conditions such as cramps, Increased blood flow to pelvic region can relieve menstrual pains and back aches. So, obviously, I guess it so would rub be... rub yourself to a better life. Yep. <laughs> Especially when you're on your period. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, there you so, go. That is uh, the five facts that we uh, thought were very interesting. And we hope that you want to come and uh, come back and see us again. So, so, like, subscribe, and come back for more content. So, good morning. Uh, good afternoon. And good night.